blood. If you're sick and you need it, nothing else will do. The tricky bit is, there's only one way of getting hold of blood, taking it out of people. People like me. Around 4,000 litres of blood are used in hospitals all over England every day. It's vital for life-saving treatments and that's why donations are so important. I'm just about to insert a needle into your arms, and. Yep, so that's in. And actually, it really didn't hurt at all. You feel a bit of a scratch, and it's not a very nice idea, but Linda's a real expert, so it's, it's completely fine. And you're doing really well. They're all up and going. There it is, filling up. Now, your body is actually a blood factory. It's constantly making new blood, but it makes it in a place you might not expect, in the middle of your bones. In fact, our bodies can produce two million red blood cells every second. That's incredible. I'm donating about half a litre of blood, the equivalent of almost two cans of fizzy drink. That's around 13% of the blood circulating around my body. Now, you can't give blood until you're 17, but you can receive it, and it could save your life. That's me done, and it only took five minutes. It's going to come out now, OK? Well done. Just keep pressure on there for us, OK? That's lovely. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. This is a bag of my blood, and sometime in the next 35 days, it's going to be put inside someone else, possibly saving their life. But it can't go straight into them. First, it's got to go to the blood factory. This is the largest blood factory in the world, and we're going in. I've never seen anything like this. Behind me are 800 bags of live human blood. Wah! And John Kirkwood is here to tell me what's going to happen to my blood. Your blood will be one of 3,000 donations that we'll have taken from donors. So we're talking about a small swimming pool full of we blood are, yeah, we every are. day every coming day, in here. Yes. All the blood coming into the factory first gets put onto a giant rack where it's filtered to remove some of the cells which can't be used by every patient. What happens next? Well, then we take the pack round to what we call a manufacturing pod and then we will take out the plasma and the platelets and the red cells. The factory's job is to process and sort our blood into three main products which treat patients with different medical needs. The first product is red blood cells, which are often used for operations and transfusions. Then there are plasma and platelets. The darker liquid, plasma, contains proteins and cells to help patients fight diseases. Finally, platelets are tiny but important. They help blood clot and can be used for specialist bone marrow and cancer treatments. To split up the red blood cells from the plasma and platelets, the blood is put into here. It acts just like a big washing machine and spins around really fast, causing different cells to separate into three layers. Then a big press squeezes out the plasma and platelets, so you end up with them in bags up here and the red blood cells at the bottom. In a different part of the factory, a vital step in the processing is taking place, testing. Every unit of blood that's donated has to be tested for two reasons. First, blood can carry diseases, and you really don't want to catch a disease from a blood transfusion. The second reason your blood needs to be tested is that just like people have different colour eyes or different colour hair, people actually have different kinds of blood. This is called blood groups, and you may have heard of them. There's A, there's B, there's AB, there's O. Now, if you get given the wrong kind of blood, this could be fatal. But don't worry, these guys are very good at what they do. These are the final products of this massive blood factory. Thousands of bags of living human blood, including mine, all going out to save lives. Because thousands of litres of blood are being used every day in the UK, it's vital that blood donations keep coming into the factory to be processed, ready to use in our hospitals. Ouch. How much blood does an average adult heart pump around the body every day? Is it enough blood to fill approximately A, 100 teaspoons, B, 100 oil drums, or C, 100 Olympic swimming pools? The answer is B, 100 oil drums. That's around 23,000 litres of blood. Ouch. And now to our lab for some amazing body experiments. Ugh! Whoa! Just don't try anything you see here at home. Today, it's your body's ticker, the heart. Zond is having a little lie down. You could actually try this bit at home. It's quite nice. But what you can't try at home is hooking Zand up to an electrocardiogram, which is what I've done. 
It's basically a heart monitor. And each one of these spikes on the display is a separate beat of the heart. And it doesn't matter what you're doing, even if you're just lazing around like Zand, your heart never stops beating. It beats even when you're asleep. As Zahn seems to be illustrating perfectly, you can see the spikes and his pulse is around 70. OK, Zahn, demonstration over. What? What? What demonstration? I've been awake the whole time. Now, your heart was beating when you were a six-week-old embryo inside your mum, just the size of a raisin. Your heart is made up of millions of tiny cells, and each one of those cells beats on its own. And here's one of them. This is a single heart cell. It just won't stop beating, even without its mates. Absolutely brilliant, isn't it, Zand? Zand? Zand! What? It's not nap time. Now, if you ask more of your body, say when you exercise... Exercise? Yes, Zand, exercise. Your heart will step up and help you out. Right, give me some nice big star jumps, please, Zand. When you exercise, your muscles need lots more blood and oxygen. To provide this, the heart speeds up. As you can see, Zahn's heart rate is much higher now than when he was lying down. Even at rest, it beats around 100,000 times a day. So, you've seen how your heart beats at different rates depending on what you're doing. But how does your heart actually work? How does it get all that blood where you need it, when you need it? Well, we're going to show you. Check this out. This is a real heart. It's from a pig, but don't let that put you off. It's very similar to a human heart, and it's a pump with no equal. Blood arrives in the heart all tired and out of oxygen. The heart pumps it straight to the lungs, where it collects new oxygen. Back at the heart, it's given a mega pump, which scoots it all around the body. And there's no chance of it going the wrong way, thanks to the heart's special valves. And if you add up all the blood each of these beats pushes around the body, it comes to 7,200 litres a day. That's enough to fill 93 bathtubs. We've only got one bathtub. And if you fill it with blood, where am I going to have my bath? You need a bath. Now, to show you how it manages to do that, we're going to cut our pig's heart open. Looking inside the heart is absolutely amazing. The muscle here is very thick. This makes the heart really strong, and that's how it's able to pump blood right around your body. But it couldn't do it without one important bit of the heart, the valves, and you can see them here. Their job is to make sure the blood goes in the right direction. To see how the heart does its incredible job, we've set up our real heart, using plastic tubes as blood vessels and green water to do the job of your blood. OK, Chris, lift your bucket up a little bit. First, the heart fills with blood. It does this every time it beats. Whoa, oh, look at that. Look at it fill, look at it fill. OK, and squeeze now. Zahn's hands are doing what the heart does by itself thousands of times a day. And the heart is clever because everything's going into that bucket and nothing's going back into Chris's bucket. The heart only pumps blood in one direction. And that's thanks to the valves, not to Harry Styles. But there's one question that still remains. How powerful is the heart and how far can it squirt blood? I filled the heart. Now, you hold that bit, I'm going to get the bucket. Give me that. Quick, quick, quick. Get the bucket. OK. See okay. if you can get it. About a foot? Yeah, about half a metre. Okay, go. go. Yeah! It's not bad, but I think we can go further. Let's refill the heart. OK, quick, fill it up again. But Zahn Squeeze is not nearly as strong as a heartbeat. Just aim it all in the bucket. Ready? OK, three, two, one. <laughs> Zahn gets quite a lot beyond the bucket. We just didn't get any in the bucket. But I still think that's pretty impressive. About two and a half metres. Two and a half metres is pretty good, but a live heart actually beats powerfully enough to squirt blood more than 10 metres. 10 metres? That's more powerful than my best water pistol. Luckily, Zahn's not 10 metres away. 